We are exploring Suriname today, formerly known as Dutch Guiana. Do you know how Suriname got its name? Most people believe it got it from the indigenous people of Surinamese. They lived in the area during the European exploration. The suffix M A M E is a common place name. Let's look at the map and see where the country is located. Suriname is a South American country borders Atlantic Ocean, French Guiana, Brazil and Guyana. It doesn't border any of the Spanish speaking South American countries. It is the smallest and least populous country in South America, divided into 10 administrative district, each headed by a district commissioner appointed by the president. Capital and the largest city is Paramaribo. Nearly half of Suriname's population live in the city. The inner city of Paramaribo is the World Heritage Site for its many historically and religiously significant buildings. The official language is Dutch. It's the only country outside of Europe with Dutch as a language of majority. There are a lot more to learn about this beautiful country. So let's start with its flag. and coat of arm ready this is the flag the yellow star in the center symbolizes unity and hope the white stripe stand for justice and freedom green and red used to represent the colors of the political parties when it became independent now green stand for hope and fertility while red stand for love and progress this is the coat of arms the shield in the middle is divided into three sections On the left a trade ship on the water symbolizes the colonial past the royal palm on the right represent the rainforest and the agriculture sector the diamond represent the mining industry and the yellow five pointed star inside it represent the people who came from the five continent the motto at the bottom means justice piety and fidelity how is it going so far Can we move to physical geography? Geography. You can divide Suriname into two different areas based on the landscape. The north and south. The northern part is about 20 percentage of the land. It contain mainly the lower land and coastal plains. This area is home to most Surinamese and their farms. The southern part is consist of tropical rainforest. and sparsely populated savanna along the brazilian border suriname has an ongoing territorial dispute with guyana over new river triangle and quarantine river area they were also involved in maritime dispute however in 2007 united nations international tribunal settled the border dispute with 1/3 going to suriname and 2/3 going to Guyana. Suriname also contests the area with French Guyana for the regions between Itani and Maroni rivers. If they ever go to court and Suriname were to get these two territories, Suriname wouldn't be the smallest country in South America. There are few mountain ranges run across Suriname. Juliana Top is the highest mountain. Suriname has several rivers drain toward the Atlantic Ocean. Longest river is Quarantine River along the Guyana border. The second longest is Morani River along the French Guiana border. The longest river within the border is Suriname. Largest lake is Brocapanto Reservoir. It is one of the largest reservoir in the world, covering nearly 1% of Suriname. It was created in the process of building Afabaco Dam across the Suriname River to produce electricity for bauxite processing. We can divide Guyana's ecoregions into six categories: Guyana's highland moist forest, Guyana's moist forest, Paramaribo swamp forest, Tipuwi, Guyana savanna, and Guyana's mangroves. The forest covers over 95 percentage of Suriname, the highest percentage of any nation in the world. Suriname is a carbon negative country along with Bhutan and Panama. Panama just made it to the list end of 2021. Biodiversity in Suriname is exceptional. In 2013, scientists researching the ecosystem in the Upper Palamo River area cataloged almost 
1400 species and found 60 new species including six new frog species one snake and 11 kinds of new fishes they found all this in small area can you imagine how many new species would be in suriname on that note let's go check out the history of suriname okay history native people have been living in suriname for millennia well known indigenous people of the regions are arawak and carib people christopher columbus was the first european to spot the coast no surprise there right a spanish expedition led by americo vespucci sailed along the coast of suriname in 1499 and spanish explorer vincente yanes panso visited the region in 1500 natives fought off against the european settlement until the second half of 17th century the first permanent settlement was established by british in 1651 in 1667 dutch took over the area later that year british agreed to exchange suriname for new amsterdam now the new york city from then on suriname remained under dutch rule until its independence in 1975 except for the two occasions where british took over the control plantations were profitable with hard working enslaved african since the 17th century sugar was the main export production of coffee cocoa cotton indigo and wood gained importance during the 18th century Until the mid 19th century Suriname's population was mostly slaves from west coast of Africa with a small group of Europeans mainly the Dutch in 1853 Chinese and Mandarin contract workers were brought in to work in the plantation but most of them eventually became small scale merchants slavery was officially abolished in July 1 1863 but they worked under government supervision for 10 years with very little compensation so the laborers from india and indonesia were brought in to replace the slaves but the plantations weren't profitable even with the little wage the agriculture production declined with the demand but in the early 20th century aluminum company of america began mining of newly discovered bauxite main aluminum ore during the world war 2 united states of america sent 2000 soldiers to suriname to protect the bauxite mine with the consent from exiled dutch government while in exile dutch government began to review the relationship with their colonies in 1954 suriname became an autonomous territory but dutch controlled the foreign affairs and defense But soon after in 1975 November 25th gained independence with Johan Freer as the first president years leading up to the independence nearly third of Surinamese immigrated to Netherlands as they thought the new country would be worse off under new government they were sort of right unemployment corruption and fraud increased soon after the independence even more surinamese moved to netherlands in 1980 a military coup led by desi bouters overthrew the government and the next two years were in political turmoil the conflict reached climax in december 1982 when the military dictatorship killed 15 prominent civilians the netherlands and the united states immediately suspended development aid to suriname then a brutal civil war between the army and the maroons began in 1986 and by late 80s more than 10000 surinamese mostly maroons fled to french guiana the 90s also saw some political and economic uncertainty In the 2000s problem continued. Former dictator Desi Bouters was elected as a president in 2010. Just before his election, he was charged with murder, given an amnesty, re-elected in 2015, then convicted and given 20 year sentence for his role in killing um 15 people in 1982. He is not in jail. He doesn't even have an international arrest warrant. 
he is free i don't think he can go to netherlands uh, but he is free and he is in suranam okay i just want to point something out this is suranam's history and this is what happened according to many sources we are not here to judge and it is also not unusual for many new country to struggle in the initial part of independence suranam got independence in 1975 only 45 years old that's very young in a in a country's history right so um i'm sure suranam will find its way and suranam is moving forward in the last um, few years has been good so let's see how it goes now let's look at one of the best part of suranam its people now people let's look at culture. one of the best part of despite the smaller size suranam is extremely diverse in terms of ethnicity and religion in terms of heritage 27% of the population is indians 22% maroon 16% is creole these are descendants from african and european parents 14% javanese from indonesia 14% multiracials 4% amerindian 2% chinese and 1% europeans suranam is also land of many faith Most Surinamese are Christians at about 52%, Hindus account for 19%, Muslims are 14, 6% of them follow folk religion, mostly African and some Amerindian, 6% of them are not religious people and final 3% belong to many other religions from all five continent. You can easily find mosque, a Hindu temple and a church in close proximity. across the country suranam is a symbol of religious tolerance this diversity contributes to suranam's rich culture and numerous celebrations and festivals year around surinamese celebrate holy christmas javanis arrival day indian arrival day day of the maroon diwali eid good friday and many more festivals and celebration everyone take part in regardless of their ethnicity or religion dutch is the official language and the language of business education government and media over 60 percentage of the population are native dutch speakers around 20 to 30 percentage speak as a second language at least 14 other local languages are in use as well Major sports in Suriname are football, basketball and volleyball. Many Surinamese football players play in the Dutch national team. Cricket is a popular game as well. For most Surinamese, rivers and canal are important mode of transportation as the road are not much developed beyond the capital city. There are no roads or bridges connecting Suriname with its neighbors either. Suriname is a little low on the human development index, but the people are very content and love to live in peace. Suriname's economy is dominated by mining industry with exports of oil, gold and bauxite accounting approximately 85% of its export. Suriname's GDP based on purchasing power parity is about 9 billion and ranked 164th in the world and 29th out of 32 in the Americas. Less than 1% of the land is arable and about half of that is cultivated. Agriculture exports are rice, banana, citrus fruits, coconut and palm oil. Sugarcane, coffee and cocoa were once a huge export. Now it's grown only for domestic use. Suriname has a small forestry and fishing industry. Manufacturing sector include bauxite processing, smelter and alumina refinery. as well as wood processing small scale manufacturing include food clothing cigarettes and construction material for domestic use suriname is one of the great countries in south america the asset of suriname is its people and the nature i hope i painted a good picture for you suriname has some areas that they need to improve but so far they are doing good and hope they continue to do well If you are watching this you must like learning about other countries 
so please give me a thumbs up to this video and subscribe to my channel so we can explore every single country in the world thank you for watching we will meet again in the next video